There are some proposals right now that could cost the Tuna Classic ecosystem millions of dollars. Before we do dive into those different proposals, right now it's important to understand that Tuna Classic, we're having a pretty decent day. We're up a percent and a half. Our market cap, it has gone over the $750 million threshold that we've been kind of hovering around between about $700 and $750 million. So we have broken past that threshold. We are starting to see our price move up and we're getting closer to going up to the 13 level, which is really great because we are down quite a bit from that. Now, these different proposals that we need to talk Talk about and this is just a mess right i get it nobody likes proposals but the implications here are millions of dollars at risk so we need to take these very seriously now what i mean by that is this proposal in particular got brought up uh this is to upgrade expired ibc clients that would re-enable ibc towards the injective ecosystem as you can see right now this proposal is getting shot down we have a lot of no votes very few yes votes luckily a lot of people realize what was happening here now this was getting overwhelming support this was almost like 80% yes votes just the other day because people were thinking, well, this is great. We can re-enable IBC. That sounds like great news. But what people realized is that, wait a second, the Terraport hacker or Terraport person who ended up stealing money from the Terraport ecosystem from all the people who ended up staking that individual or individuals would be able to use the IBC to actually get the value off the Tuna Classic ecosystem. Because right now, as it stands, the money is on the Tuna Classic ecosystem and they can't really get it out of our ecosystem. For example, a lot of the different exchanges have these wallets on a list. That way, if those different wallets end up sending funds to the exchanges, the exchanges will lock down that money immediately. So it's not going to go anywhere from there. The exchanges, they can't go through exchanges. And so their options really are trying to go through IBC and trying to go that route to get onto other networks and then hopefully eventually get the funds over to ethereum or another network injective does have different bridges over to ethereum it has a lot of different opportunities to swap money around and so it would just be a mess if this funds got over to injective so people realize we need to vote down this proposal and shut this proposal down there are other massive implications as far as the l1 dev team going forward we have two different proposals as you can see right here two alternative options for the L1 dev team. Now we have this proposal, first of all, this would be a brand new team, including Bilbo Baggins, a couple others. Jacob does not lo does no longer want to be involved. So Jacob Gaddykin would no longer be on this proposal, but this would basically be a different set of developers from what we've had before. Currently this proposal is not looking like it's going to pass. It has two days left on this proposal currently. So it, things could change. There's two days left, things could change, but it's not looking great for this proposal currently. However, we do have this other proposal here where we could actually go ahead and go with the current L1 task force. That would be this proposal right here. And you can see this proposal is currently passing with yes votes, surpassing the no vote. So we're still having these two days left on both proposals to see what happens, but anything could happen at this point. We still have a lot of wallets, a lot of different validators and individual people who have not actually come ahead and voted on these different proposals. And so regardless of whether you want to vote yes or you want to vote no on either of these proposals, make sure you vote because most likely with two days left, there are gonna be more votes coming in. These are gonna get closer and closer to a 50-50 between yes and no. And so your vote could make a difference. So make sure you go into these proposals, read them, figure out what you wanna do, and then go up to the top corner here, click on vote and actually decide how you wanna vote on these proposals. We also got some important information regarding the L1 Task Force proposal. Lunkburn Army ended up confirming that Superman is returning to the L1 Task Force in quarter two. And Ed Kim even responded to this and actually quashed some rumors that were going on. He said, I can squash the rumor that there is an active arrest warrant out. This is not true. They are 100% compliant with their local jurisdiction. So Ed Kim coming out here vouching for Superman, saying that the rumors about him having an arrest warrant and all those things are not true. So if you guys trust Ed Ed Kim, then you probably trust what he's saying here. Now for the Tunnel Classic community, we do have some other news regarding the Tunnel Classic burns. We've seen some decent sized burns coming in the past couple days. You can see a couple million Tunnel Classic being burned at different points. You might be wondering, well, how are we getting these different Tunnel Classic burns? What is causing this? This was actually largely due to the fact that the Terraport hacker was moving funds around. And so as this Terraport hacker was moving significant amounts of Tunnel Classic around, they were incurring the transaction fee or the burn tax to actually be triggered, resulting in a lot of Tunnel Classic being burned. You can see our Tunnel Classic burns are continuing to move up, hitting over 53 billion Tunnel Classic burn, getting excited for the upcoming Binance burn coming next month. Hopefully we can continue to see those coming in, seeing some nice Tunnel Classic burns from Binance. You can see that one last month came in right there. And before that, a larger Tunnel Classic 
Classic Burn, but we are seeing a steady progress in our channel Classic Burn, which is helped in large part by today's sponsor, Cremation. Cremation is continuing to help the Channel Classic ecosystem with burning down the total supply, and they're trying to pass all nodes this week. They want to bump up above all nodes and burn more total Channel Classic than all nodes. They're right now at 333 million Channel Classic burned. They want to see that go up even further and keep moving up, and hopefully this next week they can surpass all nodes, become the sixth largest burner of Channel Classic. Now, if you want to help support the cremation project and their objectives of burning Tuna Classic, maybe you should consider doing your research into the cremation Ethereum fair launch. Currently, Cremation is on Binance Smart Chain, but they're doing this Ethereum fair launch to give an opportunity to those who prefer the Ethereum network to still help support the Channel Classic burns and help them burn millions of Channel Classic every single week. There are only two days left in this pre-sale, so make sure you guys do your research and figure out if this is a project that you want to support. This pre-sale page has a lot of information, and so does their website. There's a lot of information here that's going to be really valuable to you guys. You can click on this document section right here. It'll take you down to the bottom for all the documents. You can see all this different information the white paper and they have evidence of their channel classic burns if you wanted to verify that there's a lot of information here that you guys should definitely check out if you want to learn what channel classic could hopefully accomplish in the coming years check out this video up here and i'll catch you on the next one